Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about battery storage, an essential part of any solar system. And people want to know how much battery storage do I get? Which brand do I use? And where can I put them? Three main factors when considering your battery storage options. And that's what we're gonna go through today. So without further ado, grab yourself a brew. Let's get into it. Okay, so firstly, how much battery storage do I get? This is a critical decision that you have to make right at the start of your solar journey. And it's one that troubles a lot of customers uh, because you've got to find a balance between the cost of the batteries because the batteries are actually a significant part of a solar system cost. They're not cheap but they do do all the hard work in the background for you. So battery storage is essential, in my opinion, to any solar system. I like to think of battery storage as the drummer in a band because the drummer in the band is in the background doing all the hard work and the lead singer of the solar panels out there looking pretty, getting all the credit. But the battery storage is there working hard in the background. Trust me, battery storage is an essential part of your solar system. And you need to know how much to get. And it's a tricky one because, like I say, they are expensive. And everybody has a budget in mind when they're starting their solar journey. Not everybody has an endless pot of money to spend. And also, you don't want to get too much battery storage because your solar system will simply never fill them. But saying that, battery storage can also be used to buy and sell energy. Buy it for less and sell it for more. So as well as working with your solar panels and the generation that they yield, you can also use your batteries in that way, which only goes to help reduce your payback period and reduce your energy bills. So you want to be thinking about budget um, because obviously the batteries are the expensive part of the solar system. But you want to also be trying to achieve a level of battery storage that is going to cover your daily usage. And the way to do that, obviously, is to take from your bills what you've used in a year and divide that by 365, and then you get your daily usage. But topping your batteries up from the solar is not the only way to use them. And that's because we have some fantastic tariffs available at the moment, in particular from Octopus. Octopus is an energy provider that I would recommend for anybody with solar and EVs and batteries. Um, they have some brilliant tariffs on offer. They've got tariffs such as Octopus Go, Intelligent Go, Octopus Flux, Intelligent Flux, Agile, to name but a few. And they've got other fantastic incentives as well where you can do saver sessions and they've got Cafe Nero vouchers and all sorts of things that um, can help reduce your energy bills. So Octopus is a great place to start and you can use these Octopus tariffs to charge your batteries at night for cheap and even sell it back to them for more. But the great thing about battery storage is you can add to it as you go. And that's where your installer might recommend a brand that can be easily added to. For example, the Fox Cube system that we use quite frequently. We install all brands, Pylon Tech, Solar Edge, Tesla Powerwall, Fox, Give Energy, all different sizes, all different shapes, wall mountable, stackable. There is so many different brands on the market. So you want an installer really who's gonna look at the whole of market for you and discuss your different needs because like for example, the Tesla Powerwall is a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. So if you put that in, then if you need a little bit more, you're gonna to have to go for another 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. The Fox Cube, for example, you can get them in different size increments, 2.9, 4.1, 4.3. So you can just add to them. So we top ours up every single night up to 100%, regardless of whether it's spring, summer, winter, autumn, we do it every night because our import rate and export rates are almost the same. So it makes no sense um, to take any risk with the weather the next day. We might as well wake up with 100% battery and all that means is we're exporting sooner. So we've got a full battery regardless of what the weather's gonna be like. On Octopus Go, seven and a half pence to import at night, wake up with 100% battery and then you're exporting at 15 pence earlier than you would if you were relying on the weather to do it. And of course, like we do in the UK, we wake up many mornings and it's a gloomy day. So you don't want to wake up with a 20% battery and start drawing energy from the grid at the peak times. So we try and get a level of battery storage capacity 
that a customer is going to be able to use throughout the day. If the sun does top the battery up, bonus. If it's a gloomy day the next day, you've got 100% battery regardless, and that battery will dwindle all the way down to tea time where you might have 40% left. You do your tea and you just about get yourself to the end of the day and then you repeat the cycle. You top it up again to 100% and it starts all over again. But on a glorious British day that we have so many of, imagine this scenario. You wake up with 100% battery and as soon as the sun hits the panels, you're exporting and you're exporting at more than what you paid to import. So jobs are good. And then it gets to tea time and the sun's still blazing. You're in the garden, topping up your tan. The sun's hitting the panels. Your batteries are at 100%. And then you might even decide to force discharge them, which is another thing that you can do with your batteries. And I'm gonna do a video that's specifically about force charging and force discharging your batteries. Because force discharging means that by tea time, say if you had 80, 90% in your battery, the sun's still hitting your panels, you can force discharge that battery just before the cheap rate starts again. For example, on Octopus Go, where you get 15 pence for your export, you can give 80% of your battery back to the grid just before the cheap rate starts again. Give them that back at 15 pence and buy it back off them. Fill your batteries back up at 7.5 pence. So, as you can see, you can make the batteries work so much harder for you by utilising the cheap tariffs that are available to you. If you were to look at battery storage just purely from a generation point of view, how much your solar will top them up, then you need to be looking at a level of battery storage that obviously you can afford, but that the solar will be able to fill to 80, 100%. Obviously in summer it'll fill it more than it will in winter. Um, but we look at an average throughout the year how much that battery storage is going to be used. So you wouldn't want to go and throw 15 kilowatt hour of battery on a small three or four kilowatt system because it would never be getting filled. But if we go back to the point I just made about buying the energy for less and selling it for more with your batteries, then as you can see, the amount of battery storage that you go for is not so black and white. If you are on a budget and you're just wanting to make a start on your solar system and see how things go, what I would advise, start with a sensible amount of battery storage that just about covers your daily usage. See how your data is going and then you can easily add to it down the line. So as installers, we always try and advise our customers to go with a brand that can easily be added to and in smaller increments. You don't want a system where you've got to buy another nine kilowatt hour battery or a 13 and a half kilowatt hour battery. Ideally, you want one that can be added to in nice small increments so that you can just potentially over the over the course of a year or two you can add to your battery storage capacity and it's not going to break the bank and also bearing in mind the cost of equipment is coming down all the time so the batteries that you buy now in a year or two's time the battery modules may be 20 percent less 30 percent less so it's not such a bad thing to be conservative with the amount of battery storage you buy in the beginning and then add to it further down the line. In fact, we got a call just a couple of weeks ago from a customer who wanted to add a little bit more battery storage, exactly the same battery modules that are in my house actually. Um, so I believe uh, Andy is on site and we're just gonna head over to him right now and see how he's getting on with upgrading this customer's battery capacity. Are you there, Andy? Yep, great. Right, we're heading over to you now. So just a quick overview of this system before I actually get started and add this new battery in. It's a 4.1 kilowatt system. He's got 10, 410 watt panels on the roof, a 3.7 kilowatt hybrid inverter, and then seven and a half kilowatt hours of battery storage. I've just been having a quick chat with the customer there who said he's thrilled with the system. Um, he's saved something like 1200 pound last year. Um, which is amazing. So it's great to hear that. You know, it's, it's uh, every solar system that we install, the customers are, uh, are singing the praises of solar, but it's great to come back uh, and see the customer a year down the line and they're really happy with how it's performing. So hopefully this extra little bit of battery is gonna go that little bit further in ensuring that they will not be pulling from the grid during the peak times and it'll get them through the day. So, we're going to get on with this. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. Um, famous last words. Let's get on with it. So that's all the leads unplugged now. I've obviously isolated the system. 
um, and all I've got to do now, I'm going to remove the BMS from the top, I'm going to put the new module on and the BMS will sit back on, connect back up and we're done. And there we have it, we're done. Well, that took like 10 minutes. Um, and as you can see on the uh, app here, nominal capacity is 9830. So 9.83 kilowatt hours of battery storage. It's 67%. And as you can see in the app there, we currently have 1.03 kilowatts coming in. 67% in the battery. That's topping the battery up. So the battery's taking 0 0.833 and then there's 0.172 kilowatts going back to the grid. Um, so yeah, the battery's taking pretty much all of that generation, topping itself up. So they shouldn't take too long to fill because it's a nice sunny day outside for once. Um, so that's it. So that just shows just how straightforward it is and, and why thinking ahead about whether you might need more battery storage in the future is you know something that you should be considering right from the outset because you don't want to be uh, in a position where it's going to cost you a lot of money for an additional battery to be added for example if it needs to be fixed to the wall and there's a bit more labor involved a bit more labor intensive as you can see that was like a 10 minute job for us um, so you know it's been cost effective for the customer to add an extra small amount of battery storage hasn't had to commit to another five kilowatt hours too much for what he would need this should suffice now so that's fantastic Everything's back up and running, and yeah, job done. Okay, so back to me in the studio. Thank you for that, Andy. That was fantastic demonstration there to show exactly how easy it is to add more battery storage further down the line and exactly why I was saying what I was saying, which is think about that in the future because you will potentially be at that point where you need to add more. And you can see there that considering that right at the start, how easy it's gonna be um, is important and it might save you some money as well. So we've covered how much battery storage do you get, we've covered which brands to use, basically needing to bear in mind the capacity and the ability to add to them down the line, either wall mounted, floor mounted, etc. Uh, how easy it's gonna to be to add to them. You wanna be thinking about that, or you want your installer to be um, coming up with solutions uh, for that. So the last thing to cover really is where can you put your batteries? Um, because as a customer, you're gonna be thinking about space, where can I put them? There's been a recent document came out, I'm gonna show that here now, um, and the regulations have changed as of the 1st of April quite, um, quite considerably. There's a lot of regulations where we can actually install batteries now, uh, but I'm not gonna go into that in detail, that's for another video. Uh, but just for the purposes of a customer thinking about where they're gonna put the batteries, you know, you can put them outside, but batteries will be less efficient, certain, certain brands um, that don't have their own sort of built-in heaters and fans that would monitor and maintain the temperatures when it's hot or cold outside. The Tesla Powerwall is a fantastic unit to be outside, uh, whereas other brands, not so good. Um, so that's a consideration to make. If you've got no room inside, you haven't got a garage um, or somewhere suitable, then if you're looking at somewhere outside, then you need to be looking at brands that are going to be performing well outside for you. Um, we have installed batteries outside, we've installed the power wall, some give energy units. Uh, we also make sure that we put a, a shelter above just to catch any fallen debris or build up of snow. We don't want snow sat on the top of a battery. So yeah, we make precautions when we are installing outside and we do also inform all the customers of, of the efficiency that will drop off um, in certain temperatures. Uh, a garage is kind of ideal place to put them or a utility, somewhere, somewhere like that that's, you've got a bit of space, you've got, to, you've got to have plenty of clearance around them according to the manufacturer's instructions. They don't want to be near a heat source like a boiler or a cylinder too close to that. Um, and ideally in a room that's frequently visited, like a utility or, or a spare room or something like that. They can't go in, in a bedroom or next to a bedroom. I'm going to go into that in another video, um, but your installer should be able to go through all that with you uh, and advise you on exactly where they can and can't go. Uh, obviously, lofts now, eh, eh, lofts are out. Um, but yeah, a garage is kind of our preferred place because it's got good ventilation in there. Um, shouldn't get too hot, shouldn't get too cold, um, but we do install integrated smoke alarms in any room that is not frequently visited in a property. So a garage is obviously one of those. 
Um, so you must check with your installer. He can go through all the details about where the batteries can be placed and the inverter, etc. So to summarize, obviously battery storage and how much to get is a difficult question to answer because it obviously depends on your budget. It also depends on the size of your array and also whether you are interested in force charging and force discharging your battery storage, as I explained earlier, which most customers are because if you're going to spend all this money on a solar system with batteries, you want to reap the rewards. But as I said earlier, if you are going down the solar route, Octopus has some fantastic tariffs um, and I do have a referral link down in the description if anybody would like to click on there and join Octopus, you get a £50 credit into your account. So it's a good little starter. I hope that video has been of some help and, and now you understand a little bit better about how much battery storage to get, uh, even though it's not as cut and dry uh, an answer. Thank you for watching. And if you have enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. And I love answering your comments as well. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you've got any questions, I'd love to answer those as well. And uh, thank you for watching. I've been Andy from Alps Electrical and it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.